So imagine you're out walking around in the middle of a field somewhere, in the middle of nowhere, there's not a cloud in the sky, and then suddenly there's this giant booming noise like thunder. Today you might just look around for a minute and then assume it was a sonic boom or something. There's only one problem with that theory, because in this scenario, it's 1850. Today there are all kinds of things that can account for booming sounds and droning noises, hums, that kind of thing. Like for example, there's train tracks maybe about a mile away from my house, and whenever the train comes through, uh, in the backyard it kind of sounds like there's some kind of weird atmospheric disturbance or something. Or say, if you live near Kennedy Space Center, you'd hear booming sounds quite often. Humans are loud. We're the drunk Kid Rock fans of the animal world. But some noises aren't as easily explained, and they have a name. Skyquakes. There are a few things more American than explosions in the sky. Be it fireworks on the 4th of July, to the excellent post-rock band out of Austin, to our very national anthem, it actually has the line, bombs bursting in air in it. Americans. We love our sky explosions. Of course, the booms in the national anthem are a reference to the bombardment of Fort McHenry as witnessed by Francis Scott Key in the War of 1812, not the American Revolution, as many people assume. But sky booms were recorded way before that. In fact, an American militia group out of Killingly, Connecticut reported hearing, quote, a distant roar of artillery for a whole day and night, several months before the Revolutionary War. And in another part of Connecticut is a town called Moodus, which sounds like it was named after a bipolar Roman emperor, but in fact, it was named after the Algonquin word Machet Moodus, which means a place of noises. Fans of H.P. Lovecraft may recall the strange hill noises mentioned in the Dunwich Horror. This was inspired directly by the Moodus noises. Lovecraft grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, which is 70 miles from there. And yet, to this day, people claim to hear eerie noises from the local woods. And the locals say that the best place to hear the Moodus noises is up on Cave Hill, so, uh... Have fun with that. The author James Fenimore Cooper mentioned unexplained noises in his short story The Late Gun in 1851. In case you're unfamiliar, he's best known for writing The Last of the Mohicans. He was also a personal friend of this guy. Sorry, I mean this guy. Same outfit. The Late Gun is a retelling of a Native American legend, and the, and the booming sounds over Lake Seneca are described as the voice of the Great Spirit by one of Cooper's characters. The narrator describes the sound as, quote, resembling the explosion of a heavy piece of artillery that can be accounted for by none of the known laws of nature. In that same general part of the world are reports of Seneca guns along the shores of Lake Seneca and Lake Cayuga in New York State. And while I've had fun joking at the expense of America with our love of explosions and whatnot, this is not just an America thing. Actually, reports of strange explosions coming from nowhere in the sky have been reported all over the world. In France, they're known as bombes de mer. In Italy, they're known as brontidi. The Netherlands call them mispuffers. Belgium calls them gonzen. Latin America calls them ciel moto. In the Philippines, they're known as retombos. In Bangladesh, the barasol guns. And in Japan, uminari, which literally means cries from the sea. You might have noticed how many of these refer to bodies of water. That's because many of these noises are often reported along coastlines. Some of the areas where they're most well known are Brunswick County in North Carolina, the banks of the Ganges River in Bangladesh, the Bay of Fundy in Canada, and several cities on the northeast coast of Ireland. I could go on and on, but yeah, skyquakes are usually reported near water. But we don't know why, because we don't completely know what skyquakes are. The most likely answer is that there is no one answer. There's probably many different explanations for the skyquakes that are heard around the world, but there's a lot of theories. So let's start with the supernatural explanations, because I mean, come on. They're the most fun. For example, that story of the artillery heard by the pre-Revolutionary War militia dudes, that was actually written down in a book of American folklore, and the author of that book attributed it to precognition. In other words, the entire militia experienced a premonition of a battle that would take place many months later. Or I guess you could argue that the sounds of that battle like traveled through some kind of time vortex to months beforehand and they could hear it where they were. And I mentioned the Native American take on the, the Seneca guns. Well, they actually have a whole theology around the Moodus noises. They believed, they being the Algonquins, that the Moodus noises were the sounds of Hobomach, which was the, the god of the underworld. And this was his way of speaking up and letting them know that he was there. And they also blamed Hobomach for seismic activity, which is fitting because another explanation for skyquakes is that they're basically earthquakes. In Moodus, for example, thousands of little micro-earthquakes have been measured in the hills. Maybe they aren't big enough to actually be felt, but they can be heard. Geophysicist David Hill has a similar theory about the booming noises off the North Carolina coast, saying that the vibrations in the ground could basically turn the ground into a giant woofer. Now, some disagree with the micro-earthquake theory, though, because no micro-earthquakes have been measured that line up with any reports of any skyquakes. 
But geophysicist Jonathan Lees of the University of North Carolina has a different theory on it. He thinks they may actually be man-made. It turns out the Topsail Island off the coast of North Carolina was once home of Operation Bumblebee. During the Cold War, ramjet missiles were tested there, and anybody who's been around a missile test knows that they make some noise. Now, of course, that only accounts for what was going on during the Cold War, but to this day, there are submarine and aircraft testing facilities in that area, so it might be that it sounds like artillery because it's actually artillery. And in general, these days, most skyquakes are just attributed to human activity, um, and even something that might have taken place hundreds of miles away, that sound has a tendency to bounce between the atmosphere and the ground and travel for really long distances. In fact, this is kind of one of the theories as to why you see a lot of them along coastlines and, and around water, because water might reflect that sound a little bit better than a ground with trees and plants and stuff all over it. But other reasons why it might take place around water that have nothing to do with earthquakes might be underwater volcanoes, or a collapse of an underwater cave, or even a flaking off of continental shelf off in the distance. There are also celestial explanations. Meteors have obviously made a lot of noise when they come into the atmosphere, along with flashes of light. That is an explanation for a lot of them. One recent example of that is a boom that was heard by the people of Lincoln Park, Michigan in January of 2018. There's actually some, some amateur footage of the, the meteor streaking across the sky. And by the way, good luck Googling Lincoln Park meteor. You get something else. Another celestial theory involves coronal mass ejections. These are giant blasts of plasma and magnetic fields that follow solar flares. I did a whole video on them, you can check it out right there. And according to one theory, these CMEs might be big enough to actually blast into the atmosphere and cause sonic booms. But if sun burps sound a little weird to you, then maybe earth burps are an explanation. This is actually one of the theories around the Seneca guns. According to geologists, Seneca Lake sits in an ancient canyon. Like, picture the Grand Canyon, only filled with dirt over millions of years. Well, the theory is that the deepest part of that canyon intersects with pockets of natural gas. That gas builds up under the sediment, and then, eventually, boom. Seneca guns. And one piece of evidence that actually supports this idea is the fact that the reports of Seneca guns have actually gone down since the 1930s. And what's significant about the 1930s is that some mining operations started tapping into that gas underneath the surface there. So, less pressure, fewer booms. And a corollary to that might be the giant holes that were found in Siberia a few years back. It turns out it was actually blasts of methane that had been building up underneath the surface. Not sure if there were any reports of any skyquakes at that time, though. Distant thunder in the upper atmosphere is also considered a contender for uh, a theory around this. Again, it might be something that took place hundreds of miles away, but it managed to ricochet over to where there weren't any clouds in the sky, but you still hear the thunder. And in desert regions, skyquakes have been attributed to sand cascading down dunes, a, a sand slide, if you will. The point is there are countless given reasons for why these skyquakes might be reported. There might not be any one answer to any of them. And while we're on the subject of mysterious sky noises, this might be a good time to talk about the hum. Yeah, various places around the world have reported a mysterious hum that can't seem to be explained. Windsor, Ontario has a hum, Taos, New Mexico is kind of known for their hum, and Wellington, New Zealand once had a hum. Yeah, both the Windsor and the Wellington hums have been explained away as, as human cause. In fact, the Windsor one, they found out what it was back in April when COVID-19 kind of shut down a lot of stuff. Turned out it was a steel plant across the Detroit River, and once it shut down because of COVID, the hum mysteriously went away. The Wellington hum lasted for just a brief period in October of 2012. It just seemed to appear out of nowhere. Nobody could seem to pinpoint where it was coming from. It lasted for about a month or so, and then just magically went away. Well, it just so happened that during that exact same time, a military ship from Singapore called the RSS Stalwart had been uh, moored in the Wellington Harbor, and it turns out that it was the diesel generator on that ship that was producing the hum. The one at Taos and many other places, though, have no real definitive explanation to them. Although there's plenty of theories that go around, everything from atmospheric disturbances to geological formations that might funnel air in a certain way to create a hum. But of course, where there's a mysterious hum that nobody can explain, those gaps will be filled in with wild speculation and conspiracy theory. Because humans. Especially when there's a nearby top-secret military installation like the one that's been working since 1993 in Gakona, Alaska. It's a program called HARP, which stands for High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. The official purpose of HARP is to study radio signals bouncing around in the ionosphere, but to a conspiracy theorist, that's just what they want you to believe. Rumors and conspiracy theories have been floating around about this project since it first went online. Everything from, from weather manipulation to mind control to even weirder stuff. 
In 2016, this pair of upright citizens were arrested in Georgia for planning a raid on the facility in order to, in their words, quote, blow this machine up that kept souls so souls could be released. Unquote. They thought it was a machine to capture human souls. And the authorities discovered this plan while investigating them for, say it with me, folks, selling meth. Soul capturing government experiments aside, secret government programs are a thing, and they are a regular theory involved in skyquakes and other kinds of weird noises. I mean, Operation Bumblebee is a good example of that. And another culprit that really should be mentioned is just some good old fashioned, it's all in your head. There's a condition known as conversion disorder. It's sort of the opposite of the placebo effect. It's basically your mind creates a malady that's not really there. Yeah, there was a story also from 2016 about a couple of US diplomats in Cuba who felt like they had come under attack by some kind of sonic weapon, but it turned out it was something they kind of just imagined. But yeah, an investigation was done and they concluded that it was some kind of just random natural repeating noise like a cricket chirping or something like that that sort of got embedded in their brains and then through a sort of a social contagion, it led them to just believe that it was a sonic weapon of some kind. And for many, the psychological explanation is the best one because not everybody can hear these hums. And in fact, for those who want to go the more supernatural route, they kind of explain it in the same way. It's kind of like some people can see ghosts and some people can't. But interestingly, there is one hum that we absolutely know exists and it spans the entire planet. It's been known for decades that our planet goes through what are called free oscillations. It's basically the expansion and contraction of the planet itself. The Earth is mostly molten rock, which is obviously very malleable and flexible. And over time, this has led to these regular expansion and contractions, sort of like our whole planet is ringing like a bell. And these oscillations create a low frequency hum that span the entire planet that peak out at around 4.5 millihertz. Now this is way below anything that humans can actually hear. It's like 10,000 times below what people can actually hear, but it has been measured in 2017 on the ocean floor. There's still not much we know about it in terms of like how it varies, uh, you know, what natural processes might affect it and whatnot. But there are some that argue that one of the big downsides of being in space is that you don't have access to this hum. Now most scientists believe that there's no way that a person can actually detect this hum, but there are some that think that on a subconscious level, it might actually have some kind of psychological benefit that we can't quite quantify. And then when you go up into space and you don't have access to this hum, it can actually create a sort of psychological trauma or space madness or something. I should repeat, this is not a uh, scientific consensus in any way, but it, it's, it's an interesting thought. So yeah, skyquakes can be booms, they can be hums, they can be any number of things, but they are definitely an age old mystery that to this day stir up conspiracies and speculation alike. And maybe, you know, with today's quickening pace of industry and technology, strange noises are just kind of the norm. Maybe these days the weirdest sound that we can possibly experience is just silence. Hello darkness, my old friend. But tell me in the comments below, have you ever heard of Skyquake? Have you ever been to any of the places with these hums? What do you think they are? Discuss. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Before we go, a big shout out to the Patreon supporters, the Answer Files on Patreon that are supporting this channel, helping me grow a team, being awesome. You guys are an awesome little community. And there's some new people that have joined, and I need to murder the names real quick. We got Kenny Baird, Jarek, Simon Sturmer, uh, Dave Chaffee, Dustin Byington, Franco I.L., Eden Friday, Edward Vaughn, and Diana. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get early access to videos, exclusive content, live streams, and other fun things, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. T-shirts available at the store at answerswithjoe.com slash store. They make great gifts. There are these holiday things that are coming up. And if you do that kind of thing, it might be a good gift for somebody. So go check that out. Um, it also supports the channel, obviously. So answerswithjoe.com slash store. Go have fun. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, Google thinks you might like this one. So maybe check that one out or any of the others down below that have my face on them. Just go have a look. And if you enjoy them and you want to see more, uh, I do encourage you and invite you to subscribe. I, I do these videos every Monday. All right, that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening week. Stay safe and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.